Welcome back to The Last Lap. My name is Jimmy, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host Matthew, as always. Uh, we got some good breaking news for you guys today, and we finally have our first official predictions of the 2021 season. So we can't wait to hop into that. But before we do, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. You don't want to miss any of our videos because as Daytona comes and goes and the season starts up, we're going to start uploading twice a week instead of once a week. So you can make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And then in between videos, we're on Instagram at The Last Lap News. If you guys want to check us out there because we post in between videos there. So without further ado, let's hop into some breaking news. So our first topic in today's video is some breaking news that came out this week regarding Kyle Larson and some sponsorship. So it was announced this week that he had two new sponsors announced, and those are Freightliner and Cincinnati. Um, both of those sponsors have been with Hendrick before. Uh, Freightliner has been a little more of like a minor sponsor. They haven't been on the car that much. But Cincinnati was uh, one of the primary sponsors for Alex Bowman in the 88 car last year. So they're coming back, and they're going to be on Kyle Larson's number five Chevy this year. Um, just my brief reaction. Um, I think it's good he's finally getting some name brand sponsors. Um, as Daytona got closer and closer, I had a feeling that at least one main sponsor would hop on board. Um, it'll be interesting to see what other sponsors come up and what sponsor they're going to run for the Daytona 500. I'm, I don't think a paint scheme's been released for that yet, but it'll be exciting to see more sponsors come for Kyle Larson. So for the clash uh, for this coming Tuesday, finally, we're getting close to racing again. Um, the 2311 racing will actually be in the field, but not with Bubba Wallace because Bubba Wallace is not eligible for the clash. Apparently, Ty Dillon will be driving the number 23 Toyota, the root insurance Toyota, for the, cla for the clash coming up. Um, I'm kind of surprised because... Well, not surprised that uh, Ty Dillon's in the. Well, I'm. Let me just explain. Why is Ty Dillon in the clash? <laughs> you mean you can win a stage win? You're in the clash now. I mean, heck, if heck, if Timmy, um, if like friggin' um, what's his name? Like Timmy Hill, he wins a stage. Is he in the clash now? Like, like, come on. <laughs> I I kind of don't understand that but hey that's nascar and that made they make the rules so that's just how it is but um it's gonna be interesting um this is uh, this is definitely gonna be the best equipment ty dillon's had in a cup car ever since he was in the 13 car his whole cup career and um he didn't he wasn't spectacular at all i'm just gonna be honest sorry but um um, I hope I hope he does well because I, I cannot wait for 2311 racing to make their debut. I mean everybody's been hyping it up, but um I don't I mean it's only like a 20 sun car field, so I mean he can't really finish that bad if it's not that many cars in the field. So we'll see how it goes on Tuesday night. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you is why Ty Dillon of all people is eligible for the clash because like he won a stage that's about it i don't even know where he finished in points probably not even side like the top 25 in points but somehow he's in the clash but other drivers aren't in the clash but like i'm sure there's other drivers that aren't in the clash that should be eligible that aren't ty dillon but i mean nascar has its own way of being eligible for the clash i don't remember how you were eligible last year but I wonder, I don't know, it might have been the same, I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't know, but it is a good thing for 2311 Racing to be in the clash, though, because that kind of gives them a tiny bit of, not really a head start, but it just kind of lets them begin the process of, like, just the basics of a team and executing a race, even though it's Tuesday and then qualifying for the 500 on Wednesday, but it's still, like, one extra race, one extra repetition just to get the team go on and figure out the basic stuff. So it'll be exciting to see the car on track at least. And who knows, maybe we'll see Michael Jordan on the track, but that's all for the breaking news. And now we're going to hop into some of our predictions. So it is that time for our predictions. And this is exciting because it's our first predictions of the season, even though it's for the clash, which is kind of an exhibition race. It's still a race and we're still going to predict for it because why not? Um, there's like 20 cars in the field or something like that but uh, we're going to start off with our predictions. 
Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, my prediction, road course, got to chase Elliott, baby. Got to gotta rip Chase Elliott, man. He won the last race at the Daytona road course, and I'm picking him to win. Um, two kind of sleeper picks, I guess. Uh, I would pick our – well, actually three. I'm going to pick a sleeper pick. So I'm going to pick Martin Truex, uh, Denny Hamlin, and Ryan Blaney because they've all performed pretty well on road courses too. I know Ryan Blaney won the inaugural, inaugural Roval race, and then Truex and Hamlin are always up there too. I know Hamlin finished second at the Daytona road course in July. So um, I wouldn't count those guys out of it, but I got to pick Chase Elliott for the win. Let's see. Uh, I know everybody's going to say it, but I'm not. I'm not doing it. Nope. Sorry, but I got more Shurex Jr. for this race. Because every time Elliot wins a road course race, the one person is always in second is Chase Hill, uh, not uh, March Truex Jr. So I'm picking Truex to win. Um, I got two sleepers. I got Kyle Busch because he's always, I mean, he's been a good road course racer, not, not entirely like fantastic, but he's still good enough because he's won road course races over the years. So he's a sleeper for me. Um, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. And then <laughs> I guess I'll pick Ryan Blaney too, because he's also a good road course racer as well. What are you gonna pick Chase Elliott as your pick or a sleeper pick? What that what is wrong with you? You just can't uh, accept the fact hey. that Chase is good on road courses. <laughs> You don't even bad. have him as a sleeper pick? Oh, oh my god! I didn't say it was bad at all. I mean, streets do come to an end. I mean, it doesn't last forever, so sorry. So you don't even have uh, him fine. in your sleeper picks. Okay. Fine. You want me you want me putting a sleeper? Fine. I'll put him, I'll put I'll replace uh, Ryan Blaney with him if you if okay. Hey. So Kyle Bush, Chase Elliott, sleepers. Y'all happy now? Yes. <laughs> it's hard oh, to geez. stats don't lie, but anyways, I'm just um, saying streaks come to an end, so you gotta you, get, you gotta prepare for that. Just saying. All right. Well, that was our first set of picks, and now we're gonna hop straight into our poll predictions for the Daytona 500. So, just to give you guys like a brief rundown of uh, the week at Daytona. So Tuesday is going to be the Clash, which is the exhibition race. And then Wednesday is going to be Daytona 500 qualifying at night, which is going to be cool. And then Thursday night are the dual races. And for those of you who don't know, um, the dual races are basically qualifying races. So the first one will be whoever qualifies in the odd numbers, like one, three, five, seven, and, and so on. And the second race will be whoever qualified second, fourth, six, and so on. Um, but the only two places that lock in are first and second. So if whoever qualifies, whoever qualifies first and second, as long as they don't wreck in their clash race, then they get to keep the first and second qualifying spot. But let's say somebody who qualified like 25th on Wednesday wins the duel, they start third. So basically the only two spots that matter on Wednesday are first and second. And then Thursday, it's a scramble for the rest of the field. Um, then after that, uh, after the duels on Thursday, the truck race is Friday, the Xfinity race is Saturday, and the cup race is Sunday. So that's just a brief rundown of the week. And uh, I'll let Matthew go ahead and go and pick his front row predictions first. That's, it's it's going to be a tough one because um, it's, I don't know it's just me or is it the last few years is most of the time it seems like whoever wins the poll is is kind of like the big story heading in is my opinion I'm not saying it's rigged don't you dare start putting that in the comments <laughs> but I just find it funny how some most of the, sometimes who wins the polls are like the biggest storylines so it kind of raised some eyebrows like Danica in 2013 Austin Dillon in 2014 Jeff Gordon his final year in 2015. Chase Elliott in 2016. I'm replacing sure. Jeff Gordon. Yep. Yeah, Alex. Mm -hmm. No, not Alex Bowman. That was 20, 2017 was Chase Elliott again. That one wasn't really that 
Yeah. Monumental. Alex Bowman, 2018, um, replacing Dale Jr. Uh, 2019 was William Byron. Um, yep. And then it was weird. It was Ricky Stenhouse last year. That was kind so of, odd. I, like, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of a headliner moving to GTD, but not that big of a headline to mm-hmm. give him the pull. But since this trend has been going on almost the whole last decade, I'm going to stick with that trend. And I'm going for the front row, for, for the poll first. I'm going to pay Bobo Wallace to get the poll because he is definitely the biggest storyline this whole year. And I'm not just – look, I, I know it's weird you're paying a driver because of the storyline, but I'm just going off on the trends I've been seeing the last decade. So – I'm picking Bubba Wallace on the pole, and I think another Toyota is going to join the front row, and that's going to be Denny Hamlin. I think that would be even crazy because he's the owner of that, of that car on the pole. So, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, front row. Yeah, it's weird how, like, all these trends have come up in the past, since, like, 2013 even. Um, yeah. But I'm going to – so I'm going to go towards kind of a different trend – but it's still a trend um, for the last, I don't even know how many years Chevrolet has basically dominated qualifying. So I know what you're gonna say. it's kind of hard to predict against the Chevys. Uh, I, know, I know you're going to say. I honestly don't know who to pick because there's so many options, but um, gosh, let me think. So for the poll, I'm picking, okay. It's so hard because, Hendrick Motorsports literally had the front four spots in 2019. So, like, it, all their cars are so similar, it's hard to pick. But for the front row, I'm going to pick Chase Elliott and – Oh, my. I knew it. I think, I think Alex Bowman is going to be my other one. Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman are going to be the front two just because Chevrolet has absolutely dominated Daytona 500 qualifying. Uh, since that trend in 2013 with Danica Patrick, it's literally been Chevy's like Danica Patrick, Jeff Gordon, Alex Bowman, William Byron, even Stenhouse last year. So Austin many Chevrolets. Austin Dillon. Yeah, so many Chevys. So that's going to be my front row for the Daytona 500. Well, I'm surprised by your pick because I, I actually thought you were going to say Larson because he's also a big headliner as well, and he's in a Chevy. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like – but all I, the cars I, I are knew so equal. One, I knew it was either gonna be pull a front row, or you're gonna put Jason. I knew you were gonna say that. Like it's like all the Chevys are so close together, and it, like it's hard to pick one in particular. But like that's just who I think, just because Chase and Bowman have both been on the front row a lot. But I mean, it could be any Hendrick car. I I wish could I could pick any Hendrick car, but I don't know. But those are our anything. picks for the poll for the Daytona 500. That is all for this episode of The Last Lap. We hope you guys enjoyed some of our predictions and some of our laughs in between. Um, So next week, we're actually going to have two videos back-to-back days, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Thursday, we're going to recap The Clash and Daytona 500 qualifying, and then we're going to make our dual predictions. And then Friday, we're going to come out with a video for the Truck Xfinity and Cup predictions for Daytona. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, But until then, make sure... You check us out on Instagram because we'll be posting any kind of breaking news that happens from now until then. Uh, We hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next video.